Hey everyone, this is Angela from Bake It With Love and we are doing some corned beef and cabbage today in honor of St. Patrick's Day. Not that we need an excuse to make this. Uh, the first thing though, when you get your corned beef that is packaged as corned beef, it usually has a seasoning packet in it. This is gonna go in the trash. Um, this is what I like to use. This mix will be in the details below. Uh, it's also on the website. Um, but what I have here is enough for three to four pounds of your corned beef. We are going to um, get this going in the oven in a second. But if you wanted to, you could take this spice blend, mix it with water or a mixture of water and the beef broth, put it in a container that the, the corned beef is covered with this seasoning, and you can brine it in the refrigerator for up to 10 days. Overnight usually is the minimum. Um, so if you wanted to, you could do that, and then you would take this whole mixture and put it into uh, your baking dish that you're using, and go from there, um, just as we are about to start here. Anyway, we're gonna take our seasoning, we're gonna add it to uh, the beef broth here, as well as some Guinness extra stout. Um, about equal portions, we've got two cups of the broth and two bottles of our stout. Um, that's gonna be mixed with the seasoning here in the baking dish. Then the corned beef's gonna go in and we're gonna top it with some, my favorite brand of coarse brown mustard and sprinkle it with some brown sugar. So. Um, the oven is preheated to 300 degrees. I have all my racks moved down so that everything will fit in there because I'm gonna load this full of vegetables too. We've got um, a whole head of cabbage uh, cut into eighths, or we will cut it into eighths later. Um, a small bag of the red potatoes, the smaller ones that'll be cut into halves. Um, carrots, celery, and uh, was it parsnips, I think? As well as, I like yellow onion with my corned beef, so. Um, this is gonna go in the oven though, just the spices, the first two hours, 300 degrees, and then we'll come back and add all the vegetables. So let's get this going, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my big enamelware that you know you take camping usually. <laughs> That's my biggest dish I have. Um, I put my beef broth down in the bottom of this. We're probably gonna need more. Uh, I've got my Guinness Extra Stout bottles here cracked open. Double fist this. Smells good. If I'm really lucky, I'm called. Um, we've got snowed in kind of here. I just actually just had the the guy with the snowplow here, but um, hopefully I'll get a call back uh, from the guy that has lamb. I'm hoping for. Actually, it was a, I'm trying to get an order of half a lamb. We'll see if that happens. Um, everyone else is snowed in too. I heard that the town hasn't even snowplowed the city uh, streets yet. So, anyway. My liquid is in here. I am going to add my spices next here. So my spices were all in the sheet. We're gonna go directly, directly in with a bit of a stir. I've got some whole spices in here, some ground. Uh, I typically have a lot of whole spices on hand, but not everyone does, um, like coriander. I didn't have any whole um, basic components, mustard. Coriander. I've got some broken cinnamon sticks, bay leaves in here, um, some ground ginger, star anise, fennel seeds. Oh, I love fennel seeds. Um, but my favorite thing to do with fennel seeds, so because the flavor is so amazing, is to put them in my little coffee grinder, and it just the flavor goes from from down here to like uh, through the roof. So my spices are in here. Fat side up for your corned beef. Go ahead and set it in there. I'm trying not to set it on my bay leaves directly. Okay, without doing exact measurements because I don't usually, but um, there's only no more than about a quarter cup that's going to come out of my coarse ground mustard here. So that's how much we're going to use. That's about a quarter cup there. Uh, I'm going to spread that over the top of my corned beef and then we're gonna get our brown sugar on top of this. Not too much, because I want my seasoning to really shine through when I'm cooking this. Then I'll just spoon the brown sugar out. Again, I'm looking for about a quarter cup, not a ton. I'd rather it be on top of the, uh, the fat here than in my in my liquid. So, if you want a little less, about two tablespoons of brown sugar to a quarter cup, which is about three tablespoons anyway. So, 
So we have that, that's exactly the way I want it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and cover this and place it in the oven, like I said, at 300 degrees Fahrenheit um, for two hours. And then we will be right back with you to look at it then and get our vegetables added. All right, so we're back. Uh, my corned beef has been in the, in the broth and the stout with all the seasoning. It's baked at 300 degrees for two hours um, because I'm weird about how I like my foods. I don't want any of those seeds to be found uh, randomly as I'm eating my corned beef and cabbage. So I have strained everything out. You see, it's all in my fine sieve here. All of my broth is going right back in here to my baking dish and I'm gonna add my meat and all my vegetables as well as some more fresh herbs. So let me set this aside one second. Okay, all of my broth is back in my dish now. Uh, I want my my uh, garlic and my onions underneath my corned beef. So they're going in first. I'll place my corned beef back in on top of this and then all my vegetables around. So let's do that. And uh, once that's done, I'm gonna place this back in the oven again for another two hours at 300 degrees to let it continue cooking in the oven. Um, you don't need to do any basting or anything with the sauce. I just let it cook as is with my vegetables. So let's get the vegetables and everything back in here so we can finish baking this. A couple of bay leaves. Throw some thyme over the top here. So here we have our corned beef right out of the oven, uh, an additional two hours that we did with the vegetables, so four hours total. Yeah, there you see it, nice and steamy. So our corned beef and cabbage is all done here. You see it's still steaming like it was when I showed you right out of the oven. Uh, it's ready to be dished up. All you do is slice against the grain, and uh, I like to pull my vegetables out, dish those up first, and pull the meat out, and then all the juice is left to drizzle over everything if you want to mashed potatoes, I guess, if you want, but there's already potatoes in here. We're also going to probably be making some corned beef and hash with the leftovers. It's a great breakfast. Um, we've been doing some St. Patty's Day themed stuff, so if you missed it, we've got some Irish barn brack bread that we added uh, a couple days ago here on YouTube. We have the barn brack and Irish nachos on the website. As always, uh, there's uh, more recipes on the website than here on YouTube. So uh, if you love something on the website and you want to see it on YouTube, holler at me and we'll get it added. So I hope you liked the recipe. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. Uh, we'll be doing more fun stuff. We still have more of the Guinness Extra Stout Draft and some Baileys, so some fun stuff coming with that. Next up, I think we'll do some Irish soda bread, so we'll see you for that. Thanks for watching.